Kia ora team, this is Mr. Dharma and today I want to talk to you about numerical methods of integration. Numerical methods of integration are really helpful for when you want to integrate a function but you don't know how to do it using the standard process. So let's have a look at this function. Sine of x squared over 10 plus 8. It looks pretty simple, but the x squared makes it really hard to integrate. Okay, So I can graph this function, and if I wanted to find the definite integral of this function from 0 to 12, we could look at what this area is, but to actually calculate it by hand, we don't have the skills. So let me show you what this looks like. So it's this blue area under the curve, from 0 to 12. What I can do is I can approximate that area with different shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I can approximate this area using trapeziums. Okay, so have a look at this. So I have this shape, and... Do you notice that if I were to just put a straight line across from 8 to here, I could get an area of that trapezium. Is it the same as the blue area behind? No. There's a bit above and a bit below, but it's an area, it's an approximation. So let's see what happens if I put more trapeziums. Okay, is that a better approximation? I don't know, but let me do more. As you see, the more trapeziums I put, the more strips there are and the closer the approximation is. You can still see there's some error here and here, but the more trapeziums there are, the less error there is. And so eventually, I might get no error whatsoever. And so what we do is we can approximate areas using something called the trapezium rule. Okay, so here's six trapezia, and we're going to try and approximate this. How do we approximate this? Well, there's a rule for trapezium. So there's this other way we can learn, and it's called the Simpsons rule. And instead of sticking a straight line on top between any of these two, what they do is we can stick a parabola across any three points. So let's have a look and see what that looks like. So, area, I'm going to make one parabola. Okay, that area approximation seems really off. Okay, and these lines seem very straight. But look at what happens as I do more of these. That's a parabola, and that's a parabola. It still looks pretty off. But just see what happens the more I do. And... Typically, you don't need as many to get a better and better approximation. Have a look at this. Okay. And now I have approximated the area underneath the curve using these things with parabolas on top. So have a look. There's parabolas, and I've stuck them on top. Okay. And so that's what the Simpsons rule does. So it's a numerical calculation where it approximates each of these strips, but instead of a straight line on the top, it sticks a parabola on the top. Those are two numerical methods we're going to work through today. But what we're going to need to use in this is notice that even for the Simpsons rule and the trapezium rule, I've used six strips just to do this example. And you can sort of see the error here you can see the error here, but it's not that bad. What we're going to do is we're going to try and work this out using the graph. So, have a look. Now, I'm going to use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 points, but only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 strips. So let's do this calculation with 6 strips. Let's look at these numbers. I've just worked out the heights. And I'm going to put that in a table, and we're going to go back to the whiteboard, and we're going to work this area out using these two methods. Okay, here we go. 
Okay. So here is the trapezium rule. It's a little different from what the formula sheet says, but this is what I like to think about. It's h divided by 2 times the first line plus 2 times all the middle ones plus the last one. Okay, and we can see this really clearly back on the trapezium. So let's have a quick look. So I've taken those points and I've got this trapezium. We can look at how we find the area of a trapezium. And the area of a trapezium is you take this length, which I'll call y0, and you take this length, which I'll call y1, you take the average, and then you times it by the height of that trapezium. And so the formula is times the height, right? And you do the same thing for the next part. y1 plus y2 divided by 2 times the height. And you do that all the way through until you get to the last one. If you notice, all the ones in the middle are being counted twice. I've got a y1, a y1, a y2, a y2, and the ones on the end only get counted once. So the formula that we've developed is put the h over 2 out the front, put square brackets, take the first term, plus 2 times all the middle terms, plus the last term. Okay, And this should approximately be the integral from a to b of your function. And I've written that nice and clearly for you up here. That's different to how the formula sheet has it, but this is what I want to use. Simpson's rule has a very similar way of doing this, but instead of doing 2 times the middle, it does 4 times the odd ones and 2 times the even ones. What do I mean odd and even? Well, what I do is I grab n and I go starting from 0, I count up. Okay, this tells me how many strips. I've got six strips. Okay, Even though there's seven numbers, I've only got six strips. And so for the trapezium rule, I'll take this number, and then two times all these numbers, and then I'll add this number. So let's try that. That's going to be, the area is going to be approximately equal to h over 2. Well, h is 2 over 2 times 8.00 plus 2 times all the middle terms plus the last term. Okay, And if I type that into my calculator, that will give me an approximation of the area. Okay, Whereas Simpson's rule does something very different but not super different, but it takes these and it goes, well, this is odd, this is even, odd, even, odd. And so it has the area formula. Area is approximately equal to, let's have a look, the difference divided by 3 this time. And you get the first one plus 4 times all the odd ones, so that's that, that, and that, plus 2 times all the even ones, so that's this and this, plus the last term. Okay, If I type in these two approximations, I should be able to get an approximation for the area. So I'm going to grab a calculator and I'm going to type this in for me, and I get an approximation of the area that is equal to 98.23. But if I did Simpson's rule, I'd get a slightly different answer. I get 96.83 recurring. Okay? And if you want to check the actual area, well, we can't integrate it by hand, but we've always got the wonderful use of our calculators. And so if I type that into my calculator, the integral from 0 to 12 of sine of x squared over 10 plus 8 dx, well, let's see what happens. 
0.08. So we look at this and we go, oh, Mr. Dharma, it seems that the trapezium rule was closer than the Simpsons rule. And that's a very common thing. But remember, we only took six strips. If I took more strips, I would find more accuracy more quickly with the Simpsons rule. And this just so happens that it just didn't work out as nicely. I like these formulas because I think they allow us to view it a bit better. So, I hope this helped. All the best, Mr. Dharma. Just remember, Simpsons rule, you have to have an even number of terms. Okay? So, from zero, you have to end in an even number. Trapezium rule, it doesn't matter so much. Thank you.